Okay, all right, everyone. So I'm here. Um, my camera's not working today. I have an issue with the program, so can't see me, but I'm here. Um, so today, hopefully, a few more people join because today we're going to be talking about the project in the beginning of class, and then we'll finish up our workshop that we worked on on Monday, and then if we have more time, we'll also do uh, basically the second kind of plot that I want to make for this workshop. Uh, but if we don't have time, then we'll either cover it next time after spring break, or I might make a video and then I'll post it, uh, you know, because this other workshop is going to help you with the project too. And then at the very end of class, if you want to have, um, well, okay, let's take a step back. Okay, so on Monday, you know, there is the issue with our quiz where I tried extending the time and Canvas didn't actually extend the time for the quiz, so... You know, the quiz closed earlier than I wanted it to. So I'll give you the option of either having me grade uh, the quiz on Monday or your quiz today. So today's quiz is going to be very similar to the quiz on Monday. Really, all I did was change some numbers and I changed some line colors that you have to plot. So it's virtually the same. So you can either choose to have me grade the quiz on Monday that you had or you can um, take the quiz today. So if you want me to grade your quiz on Monday, you need to let me know before the quiz today. Let me make a little announcement in the chat. So that means we can turn it in, like we can give, send it to you, PM you right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically you can send me a message literally one minute before the quiz if you want the quiz on Monday graded. And I'll just check the timestamp. But if you don't let me know till after the quiz, I'm gonna take the quiz that you did today. Oh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you want the quiz on Monday graded, you have to send me your script file too, because a lot of you sent your, your script on Discord where you like, copied and pasted it as a comment, which I thought would be okay, but if you have like a multiplication sign in MATLAB, like the star, in Discord, it messes with the formatting, so it actually it goes away. So I would have to go into all of your scripts and put in a multiplication sign on basically in every single spot where we need it, and it's a big pain in the ass. All right, so that's why you need to send the script file. So, and send the script file. Okay. All right, so any questions on that? Yeah, if you sent it last night, then you're good. I mean, literally, you can, again, you can tell me a minute before the quiz today that you want your quiz on a Monday graded and send the script file, and I'll still accept it. But if it's after the quiz starts, then I'm going to grade the quiz from today. All right, so any other questions? If you do worse on the second quiz, then I'm still going to grade that one. You shouldn't do worse on the second, though. It's it's Again, it's virtually the same as the first one. Um, I had a question because I think yesterday I sent you my the, the MATLAB script file. Mm -hmm. But I was double checking, and I think I sent you the wrong, like, wrong file. Can I still resend it with the right one? Yeah, yeah, I just sent it before the quiz today. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so if there's no more questions, then we'll get started on the overview for the for the first project. All right. All right, so first project, it's assigned today, so you don't need to worry about doing it over spring break. You know, you don't have to. If if I'm, you know, someone in this class, I would personally at the very least look at what the project is and at least look at the data and get a feel for what you have to do. So actually, let's go back here. If you go on the main page, uh, you see that we're going to talk about the project today, and you can actually see on the kind of tentative schedule here when the project is going to be due. So it's going to be due on April 26th. And basically, just like homework, it's going to be due by 11.59 p.m. on that date. And then on that same day, we're also going to go over project two. So... I know it's kind of rough where you turn in a project and then your next project is assigned on the same day, but really I'm doing this so you have 
just as much time to work on the second project. So for the first project, we're going to talk about it today, then we have spring break, and then you're going to have one, two, three, four weeks to work on it. Um, I should actually have this due at the end of the week or something like that. I'll give you four weeks to work on the, on the first project. Okay, and then um, and then we'll also assign project two, and I'll give you four weeks to work on project two as well, or just about four weeks at least. And I'll have project two basically due at the end of finals week. So finals week um, is in this week here, but I'll have you turn in project two on the Saturday uh, of finals week. So it's basically after all your finals are going to be done, so you can... You know, work on your finals, and if you have a little more to do for your second project, you can do that after your finals. Of course, you can turn it in before the finals, too. But you should have a lot of time to work on both of these projects. And, you know, of course, um, I, I'm from a, a standpoint where I already know what you have to do on the project, but um, if I was going to do this project, I mean, I could knock it out easily in a day. So, of course, it's going to take longer for you guys, and it might take, you know, the full four, four weeks to work stuff out. It shouldn't. Um, but you're basically, you're, you're going to have plenty of time to work on both of these projects. All right, so let's go over what it actually looks like. So you can get the data either by clicking on the date for today. <laughs> okay, I thought I had a link here. I don't. So instead, go to Files on the left-hand side. And then I have a folder for Project 1. So you go to files and then click on project one and then I have the deliverables for the project here and then the data sheets that you're going to have to use for the project. Okay, so I'm going to just open it up on my computer here and we'll go over here. So um, last semester the project was on COVID-19 data, so mostly for cases and deaths. Actually, let me pull that up too um, just so you get an idea of what that looked like. Okay, so these were the figures that we had to make for the project the last semester. Um, and this one specifically was for the second project. But you'll see the first project and the second project, the, the goals for the figures that we create are going to be the same. I might have you do a few more things on the second project. But the difference between the two projects is on the second project, we're going to focus on using for loops in our scripts. And of course, you'll understand what a for loop is once we go over that in probably a few weeks' time. Okay, but for the second project last semester, this is what we had. So it was, again, COVID-19 data, in this case for cases, deaths, and also hospitalization data. So there was a lot of graphs on this project. I probably won't have quite as many uh, this time around. All right, so here's patients hospitalized due to COVID-19. And you'll also see in all of these figures, or it should be all of them, I have the date for the last uh, date of testing or the last date that was available in the spreadsheets. And that'll be something that you have to include. Let's actually make this bigger. All right, so amount confirmed to be hospitalized from COVID-19. Amount of patients in the ICU. So something like this, you'll see I have like three graphs or ICU beds. There's one, there's two, and then there's three. So this time around, I'll just have you basically do this third graph. You'll see that this coding for the previous graphs here, they're kind of like intermediate steps to get to this final graph. All right, but again, this is from last semester. Look at that spike. That was insane. I remember when we started this semester, last semester, uh, these summer spikes, they were huge for the beginning data that we had, and then January came around. All right, and then we have some bar graphs too. All right, so anyways, that was last semester. So let's go over the project for this semester. So we're going to use COVID-19 data again because, you know, it's relevant to us, and I think it's more interesting than some just random, boring arbitrary project. So we're going to use COVID-19 vaccination data this time around. 
And uh, there's a good amount of vaccination data. I wish there's a little bit more for stuff like ethnicities and, and age and stuff like that, but um, that stuff isn't out, at least in a format that I would like. Okay, so let's go through this uh, document, though, which, again, is going to have your, your deliverables and guidelines. So it's due on the 26th. Um, I might change that by the end of this week, though. Let me take a look at the dates again. I want to make sure that you have a full four weeks to work on it. Okay, so project overview. This is going to aim to strengthen your understanding for all of the topics that we've learned so far in MATLAB. So that'll be things like array addressing. I mean, that's the biggest one, is array addressing and plotting. And then, of course, the new functions that we've been learning over the past week or so. And we're going to focus on COVID-19 vaccination data. So I'm going to give you two data sheets that are on Canvas. You already saw them. It's under Files and then Project 1. So they're right here. And you're only going to use those data sheets, okay? I don't want, I don't want you to use any other outside sources. Make sure that, that you use these. And these data sheets, by the way, um, at least the COVID-19 vaccination data, that's given from the state of California. So it's not like some random website. Okay, so one, one of the, the data sheets is the population for different California counties. And then the other data sheet, the more important one, is the vaccination data that we have for all of these California counties. Okay, and then when you submit your project, your figures, uh, basically you need to use code or sp I'm sorry spreadsheets that are, um, that are up to date. So I want you to include data that's at least or that is on the date of April 22nd. So basically, you know, I just want it to be a little more up to date than what we currently have right now. And I'll post this um, data sheet as soon as it's avail um, available. Okay, and then uh, basically, if you're not hard coding, then you're going to be able to just download the new data sheets and you could just run your code and that's it. And all of your graphs are going to be updated and they're going to be accurate without changing anything at all. So that is kind of also some motivation for you to not use hard coding. And you know, we kind of talked about hard coding last time, but we'll talk about it more today in the workshop too. Okay, so to work on the project, again, you're going to be using techniques that we've covered throughout the semester and our lectures and the workshops that we're doing now, they should cover um, the vast majority, if not all of the techniques that you need to complete the project. So there's a question, I think last class, if we could, if you guys could use different, you know, functions or commands or techniques that we didn't go over in class. So you can do that with one exception, and that's for loops. So you can't use for loops for this project purely because that's the main topic for our second project. Okay, and then the MATLAB form that, that, um, MathWorks has, it's going to be a really good friend for you for this project. So basically, if you just Google something like MATLAB is member function for an example, one of the first results is probably going to be the um, MATLAB or MathWorks form. Let's actually do that. So I'll do MATLAB is member function. Okay, and the, the first one is actually um, MathWorks or MATLAB's documentation here, but if you like put in a question for how like how to use a function or something more specific, one of the things that you're gonna, one of the results you're gonna get is probably going to be the form. Let's do form. All right, so if I click on this, this is what it looks like. And, you know, these are just, you know, form members, of course, but I've personally found a lot of the times if I have a question for how to do something in MATLAB, it'll take me to this form and the answers are always really good. So I would really recommend taking a look at that. Yeah, so there's a question, would we be able to do this project with what we've gone over so far? So um, I, I think just from trying to think about my code off the top of my head, I think we can besides one function which is actually the, the ace member function, funnily enough. And I we have a workshop that's going to go over that. I think the second plot that we're going to make in this current workshop, I think it includes this function. So once we go over this, then you'll have everything that you need. 
Okay, and then also Discord, this is also going to be of a lot of use, at least from last semester. Um, students used it basically every day to kind of discuss the projects. So I'll make a channel for each project in Discord. And then in there, you can discuss the project with, you know, your classmates or with me. I am usually really active on there. But there is one stipulation. Don't directly share your code with others. So, you know, if someone has a question on, on how to do some part in the project, I don't want you to, to like to take a screenshot or something of your code and just share that because that's not, I mean, essentially that's cheating, number one. But that's not helping the other person. So if someone has a question on how to do something, you know, you want to guide them to what they have to do and, and not just give them the answer. Okay, so I'm going to be watching to make sure that you guys don't do that because, again, it's it's not helping anyone. So you can discuss the techniques and functions, but don't share the code. Okay, so your project is actually going to be turned in in the form of a report. So don't freak out too much about the report, but you're going to have an introduction. And really, this is kind of just a gim um, a gimme for points. It's like, um, I think, five points. Yeah. And basically, it'll be about a paragraph in length where you're just going to state what you're going to show for this project and what the general methods are that you used for processing the data. So you'll talk about stuff like, um, I don't know, importing the data, using array addressing, and some of the more main functions that we use to, to manipulate our data. Okay, and then you're going to have another section called results and write-ups. On this section, you're going to provide a write-up for the code. So that means that you're going to explain every single part of every single line of code. Sounds like a lot, but you're, um, you're not going to need to type out um, an insane amount. And at the end of this document, I have an example of, of a write-up so you get a better idea of what I mean. So a lot of the times in our code, we're going to have basically a block of code where, I, I, where basically every single line in that block of code is going to be really, really similar. So the only difference might be like a number or a letter line by line. And so when that's the case, you can just write an, an explanation for that entire block of code and, and not every single line. So I actually have an, an example of this in the write-up at the end of the document. So we'll see that at the end here. Okay, and your write-ups, they're going to be broken up into two sections. So the first one is going to be Basically, all of the code, basically starting out when you clear your memory and, you know, you import the data sheet, all the way up to, I want to emphasize that, up to the code that's needed to make the plot. So basically, we have all of the code where we process the data. And once we have all of that code, then we are ready to make our plots. So I want to go up to that point. And I say up to that point because... For your plotting code, I only want to see a write-up on two plots. So you have to make a lot of plots for this project, but I only requ require, you, require you to make two write-ups for your plots. So one of these is a plot where you're going to make a plot for COVID-19 vaccinations per day on a seven-day rolling average. Oh yeah, we actually have to talk about rolling averages as well. Um, that'll be something that I'll go over in a, in a workshop. And then um, the other plot that you're going to have to talk about is the COVID-19 vaccinations for the top five most populous counties. And this is cumulative, so this is going to be your bar chart. Okay, and then a lot of um, a large portion of your grade is going to be based on this section for a write-up. So you really want to make sure to be detailed and clear here. And basically, if you're wondering why I have you have a write-up, it's so you can... And so I know that you know what you're actually writing down in your code. So you're actually showing me explicitly if you know what the code is doing. And this is kind of another method for me to hopefully prevent you guys from sharing your code with each other and just, you know, copying and pasting it. I want to make sure that you actually know what you're, what you're typing down. All right, there's a question. Before we turn it in, before we turn the project in, can we have... Um, can I look it over to make sure it's done right? So, uh, yeah, yeah, you can do that. You can send it on Discord. Like, you can send a, some of your figures or something. And I'll tell you if it's wrong or not. I'm not going to tell you, you know, the code that you need to change specifically. But I'll try to give you some hints as, what you, as to what you might need to change or work on. 
All right, so any other questions so far? Okay. All right, so the next section is going to be the appendix, and this is where I want you to put all of the figures that you need to make for the for the project. So for the project, you need to make six figures in total. So they're all listed out here. So we have an, kind of another section here. So the first section is going to be bar charts. So your bar charts are going to have, one of them is going to be the cumulative vaccines for the top five most populous counties. And that's actually um, this one right here. So this is, you're going to need a write-up for this figure. Okay, and then another one is going to be the percentage of population vaccinated per manufacturer. So, you know, we have three manufacturers now for the vaccines in the U.S. We have uh, Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson. So, basically, I want you to break down um, the percentage for the population where, for, you know, how, how many people or what percentage are vaccinated with Pfizer, what percentage are vaccinated for Moderna, and what percentage for Johnson & Johnson. I'm looking at this now. I forgot to add on here. They should also say top five most populous counties. So let me um, add that on today. I'll, I'll update the deliverables today. So basically all of these are actually going to be for the top five most populous counties, all of your figures. I don't want to update the deliverables too often because it can be a hassle to keep downloading the new one. So I just want to upload this today. I'll up update it today and hopefully this is the only time I have to update it. Okay, I'm making a note for myself. Okay, and then uh, the other one is the percentage of the of the population vaccinated. So this is, you know, regardless of manufacturer, it's just going to be the percentage of population that is vaccinated for the top five most populous counties. And again, we're only doing this for California. Okay, line plots. So um, we're going to have some line plots too, which basically, you know, show from the very beginning of when vaccine started to the current day. So the first one is going to be the amount of people with at least one dose per million, and then on a seven day rolling average. So that's kind of a lot of things at once here. So when I say per million, that's basically when we take the population of each county into account and we can scale our data per million so this is a better way um, for a lot of these things to to kind of compare how every county is doing okay and then the next one is going to be the amount of people that are fully vaccinated per million on a seven day rolling average so you know that means two shots for Moderna and Pfizer and then of course Johnson and Johnson that's only one shot and there's a column. I'll actually show you guys the data, what it looks like. But there's a column for um, people that have one dose. And there's another column for people that are fully vaccinated. And then the third one is to have a, another plot for COVID-19 vaccinations per day on a, on a seven-day rolling average. And this, again, should be for the top five most populous counties. All right, so another question, are we going to have quizzes when projects are assigned? So yeah, we're still going to have quizzes because we're still going to be learning new stuff. Really soon here, we're going to start the programming chapter, which we'll be talking about for loops. That's the biggest one. And then also stuff like um, a while loop and if else statements. So yeah, you're still going to have uh, quizzes as well. Okay, and then at, at the end of your appendix, you're going to copy and paste the entire code that you have. Okay, any questions on the project? Okay. All right, so the grading breakdown, this is basically your rubric. So you want to make sure before you turn in your project, make sure that you that you've looked over every single aspect of this part and then you can ensure that you get the the most amount of points that you can get all right so introduction we already talked about this this is really just a, a gimme for for points here i want to make sure that you get these five easy points all right there's a, another question so we're gonna have six figures and they're in the top five counties yeah you're gonna have six figures that you have to make for for your project and 
every single figure it should be for the top five most populous counties so i'll update this later today project you know the points here are out of 100 but the points that doesn't really matter that's just for convenience to me really the the waiting for the grade that matters so the waiting here let's go to it is i forget what it is for the first project so let me open it up all right so for the first project it's 25 percent, and for the second project that one is worth 35 percent. so it's a good chunk you really want to make sure that you do well on this do i have any samples from last semester um no not right now but i can ask a past student if they're fine with me showing their project there were a few really good ones that that could probably help you guys out um yeah okay i would probably need to not show their code though because some of the code is actually pretty similar okay the next section here is the validity of code so what i mean by that is i'm going to basically open up all of your code and I'm going to try to run it. And if it runs without modification, meaning I don't need to change anything in your script, then that's good. If I need to change a few things, um, then you're going to be docked a few points, depending on the, the severity of things I have to change. So one of the things that, um, that you shouldn't do is change the file name. Okay, because when we download the file, like if you want to do it day by day, um, the, the name of the file is probably going to be the same for where you download it every single day. So one of the, the files that we have, it's called COVID-19 Vaccines by County. And this file name is going to stay the same every single day. So you don't want to change this because you can just say in your, in your script, read table, and then have this file here. And the data inside of that script or that spreadsheet is going to change every day. Um, and you know, I don't want to have to change the name of that file every single time I want to update my script. Okay, so basically when you download the, the these data sheets, don't change the file name. Okay, that way once we update the spreadsheet that we have, I can still just run the script by pressing run and that's all I have to do. Okay, the, the next part here is were the correct graphs generated from the code? And were they formatted um, for the requirements that we have? So I have plot format requirements right here, which we'll talk about in a bit. And I also give you two reference pictures. So these are two graphs um, out of the six that you have to make. So basically this will help you to make sure that you're on the right track for your code. I'm not gonna give you the other four, but at least you have these two. So. If you have these two that are correct, then you should be good with the others as well. All right, then, and that's 30 points. So that's a, a really big chunk of, of your grade. Uh, three of each, what do you mean by that? You need to make six figures, but I, I'm giving you two basically reference pictures that that I have here. So I think there's three line line plots that you have to make, and then there's three bar charts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I go back up here, we have three bar charts and then three line plots. All right, next section is the code structure. So here I'm going to check if any hard coding was implemented. So We've talked about that a bit. We'll talk about it some more though in our workshops. You want to avoid hard coding. So that's part of the grading here. And, um, oops, I spelled appropriate wrong. Nice. I'll fix that too. So we're an appropriate amount of comments used throughout the code. So in the workshops we've been doing, you kind of had a, or you should have a better idea of, of how many comments you should be using throughout your code. So basically, you know, we talked about the use of comments before, but you should have a good amount of comments used throughout your code so it can help with readability. So especially for me, I can open up your code and I can see what you're trying to do basically on on every section and every line of code that you have. So if you don't have any comments in your code, that's terrible. So don't do that. I want to see at a glance what you're doing at each part in your code. 
Alright, and then was it formatted in a way that's easy to follow? So, you know, here is basically the structure, right? So you want to break it up in a way that's easy, again, to, to see what you're doing. So I don't want, you know, basically your code with zero line breaks throughout. That's really hard to read. So make sure that it's formatted in an easy to follow way. So kind of like what we've been doing in our workshops, we kind of break it down section by section. And then within those sections, we might have a few steps. So basically just follow the kind of formatting that we've been using in the workshops. All right, that's 30 points too, so that's quite a lot. And then the other one is write-ups. This is also the other really big section, so 30 points again. So did you have all of the write-ups, number one, um, for, the, for all of your code and then those two figures that you need to write up on? And did the write-ups cover every aspect of that code? So, you know, some of our, our, um, our code that we have on one line, it might have a lot of different functions kind of wrapped in. Let's go down here. So you see here, there's a lot going on this line of code. So I would want to make sure that you're talking about every single aspect of this line. We'll talk about this example right up in a bit too. Okay. So just make sure that you're covering every single aspect of your code. Cause I want to make sure that you, that you know every single aspect of that code. Okay, and then were the write-ups well explained and were they easy to follow? So, you know, make sure that you're, um, that you're actually explaining it in a way that makes sense and that it's easy to kind of read through line by line what you're doing. And again, for, you know, for all of this, you guys can send me your, your project before you turn it in for some feedback. I'm always open to that. And then the last part is the report formatting. So for the actual report itself, all right? So the first thing were all of the report components um, present. So go back up here to the report structure. I want to see that you have an intro, that you have a results and write-up section, and that you have your appendix here with your figures and then your complete code. Okay, and then was it well structured? So was it spaced out well? Did you have you know consistent formatting and, and a font? And then did you have good spelling and grammar? You know this isn't a um, you know an English course, of course, but um, <laughs> an English course, of course, that's fine. Okay, but I want to make sure that you still have good spelling and grammar. You know that it still matters. And really, as an as an engineering student, and once you start working. You're going to be writing a lot, to be honest. So you want to make sure that you have good spelling and grammar. Okay, and then did the report flow in a logical manner? So just make sure that your report structure is in the same um, format that you see here. So you should have your intro first, results, and write up second, and then your appendix with your figures, and then your code. Okay. All right, any questions on this before we start talking about the plot format requirements? Okay. All right, so the plot format requirements, basically you should add here or you have to add here to all of these following rules. So first thing, you shouldn't have any white space before the curve or after the curve. So what I mean by that is Sometimes when you plot your data, you might see in the beginning that before your curve start, you have just this white space and we don't want to have that. So you basically need to adjust your X limit and same on this part over here. Once your curves end, you might see that you have some white space. We don't want to have that in, in the plot. So you would have to adjust the, the range for your X limit. So that's pretty simple to do. All right, next thing, your legend. I shouldn't block any of the plotted curves. So, you know, here I put my legend over to the left. And you can imagine if I had it on the right hand side here, it would be blocking this curve here. That's, you know, that's blocking data. I want to see that. So make sure that the legend isn't blocking any of the curves that you have. Next one, there should not be any exponents present on, on any of the axes. So you see here, I basically formatted my y-axis here to be whole numbers. So this goes up to 70,000 um, for vaccinations per day. So you want to make sure that's a solid number too. 
you want to make sure that you um, format it so that there aren't any exponents. All right, then your figure title should be descriptive and um, without being overly long. So you want to make sure it's not like, you know, sentences of, of a description. And then the most recent day for testing should also be included and don't hard code the date. So what I mean by that is don't actually type out what the date is yourself. You should have code in there to pull the most recent date from the spreadsheet that you have. All right, so we've seen this before. We used a, a function that was called num to string before. And for a date, we have to use a function called date string. So we'll go over that too in a workshop. Okay, so you see here I have the, the last day of testing for at least when I made these figures. And then the last day of testing, or not testing, the last day of vaccinations given. Okay, and then the last thing here is our x-axis tick labels. <clears throat> Alright, so if we have a rolling plot, which is this line plot, you should have the respective months. And then for your bar charts, you should have on your x-tick labels the respective county that we have. So here, this is already for, um, sorted by the top five most populous counties in California. So LA, that's the most populous. Then we have San Diego, Orange, Riverside, and then San Bernardino. All right, and then these are the reference pictures that, I, that I'm going to give you. So I'm only giving you two out of the six. So basically, you, you don't have to make them exactly like this. In fact, um, you know, I would encourage you to not make them exactly like this because you should kind of think about this stuff on your own, right? So you need to follow the plot format requirements here. But for everything else, kind of like your, your stylistic choices, you don't have to make them the same as this. So maybe you want to put the legend on the outside of the plot. You can do that. Maybe you want different line colors. You can do that. Maybe you want to format your, your legend here differently. You can do that too. So you don't need to make it the exact same that I have. <clears throat> All right, so last part here is a write-up example. So remember, you're going to need to have write-ups throughout your code. So this is a write-up example here, not even for the full code. This is actually from one of our past workshops. But this will give you an idea of what I kind of want to see. So you don't have to use the exact format that you see here. You know, I have my code in a box, and I have syntax highlighting on, meaning that the that the syntax is, is colored in the way that it's kind of shown in, in MATLAB. So it doesn't have to be, you know, like this, but it should be clear where you have your code and where you have the explanation for that code. So again, here's an example. So in the beginning here, I'm importing my data. So I show the code and then I have the explanation for that code. So, you know, here I'm saying we import our data using the read table function. And, and you know, you should kind of touch on why we're using this read table function. So here we're importing the data as a table in MATLAB, and we can contain multiple data types in the same place. That's why we, we use a table. <clears throat> All right, next part is um, converting launch speed to a double. So remember, we converted that column called launch speed from a cell to a double. And then I explained why we did this. So we converted the column launch speed from a cell array to a double, kind of just a numeric array. So we can use a logical operator on this array later on. Because if we had this as a cell array, we can't use a logical operator. Okay, I'll get to your questions and actually I'll look at them now. Okay, so question one. So the write-up should be really long. Um, I'll talk about that. And then Benoit, so our write-ups are basically implemented into the code using comments, or do you want actual write-ups like Google Doc? Um, I would, yeah, I'll actually explicitly say I want it to be in like a Google Doc just because I want you to really differentiate where you have the code and then where you have the write-up. And also you can format your, your explanations better like this where you, maybe you want to have bullet points or maybe you want to number different parts of your code. So yeah, use like something like a Google a Google Doc or 
or Word doc, whatever. Because if you just do comments in MATLAB, it's one, it's going to be messy and you can't format it as well as, as you might like. Okay, and then as for the length of the write-ups, they are going to be kind of long. Yeah, that is true. But for, you know, sections like this here, you see that it's a block of code. And I'm not going to have a write-up for every single line that's in this block of code. I'm going to talk about this block of code kind of as a whole. And basically, I can kind of use just one line as an example here. Because for all of these lines, I'm using, I'm basically doing the same exact coding. I'm just changing the numbers here to, uh, you know, to be a different cell that we're making. And then I'm changing the player that we're looking at over here. And you'll see in your project, you're going to have a lot of kind of code blocks that are like this when we have multiple lines that are doing the same thing. And there might just be one little difference line by line, like the, <clears throat> like the number. Jeez, my voice is kind of going out. And um, so in that case, you can just talk about the block code um, as a whole. And maybe some parts are, are going to be using very similar things in different blocks of code. So in that case, you can just basically copy and paste your, your write-up and you can just modify whatever needs to be modified in that write-up. So it is going to be a lot, but it's not going to take forever. Don't worry. I mean, I typed this up pretty fast. So it will be substantial, but don't freak out too much about it, especially for these code blocks, you know, not having to write an, an explanation for every single line of code that that's going to save some time. So let's look at this code block here. So I show the code, then I have the write up below. So in this case, I'm saying, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in this block of code. So this explanation here should be somewhat substantial. So I first mentioned that we create our cell array that's called angels underscore ind, where each cell that we're creating here is going to contain a numeric array for the indices that we have for each player. So this is from our workshop last time. Okay, so this is when we created the cell array on the left hand side here. And then I kind of break down what we're going to have contained in those cells on, on the right hand side here. So I explain how we use the, the equality logical operator. It's actually a relational operator technically, but the answer we get is a logical output of a one or a zero. So we use the equality operator to determine whether, I spelled weather wrong too, didn't I? I use LaTeX and they don't have spell check by default. So um, yeah, I'll change that too. So we're gonna determine whether a player's name and each row of the column vector player name shows up. I also need to add shows up. Sorry, I wrote this late at night, so I have a few mistakes. Don't do what I do here. <laughs> Make sure you read over your, your report before you turn it in. So do as I say, not as I do. So we use the equality operator to determine whether a player's name showed up in every single row in this column called player name. Okay, and then the next thing we did was we used the find function to find the indices for all of these times when our logical operator gave us a value of one. So, you know, this equality operator here, it actually, it works line by line in our column vector player name. And it tells us, was it true? And if it was true, we get a one. If it was false, we get a zero. So the find function looks at all of those indices and it, it tells us when we had um, a logical answer of a one, which is true. All right, and then uh, the next part here, I defined, you know, our target miles per hour. And then I explained why we did this. So we did this to avoid hard coding later on throughout the script. So in our script here, we reference this variable NPH multiple times, and that's going to help us out. So later on, if we want to modify our script, so we look at maybe a target mile, miles per hour, I don't know, 80, we only have to change this one line of code and not multiple lines of code where, where if we were hard coding, we would have to change all of those lines to basically say, you know, 100 or 80. So that would be a huge hassle. So that's why we don't hard code. All right, so anyways, that's an example of the write-up. And that's the full document for the project. So are there any questions on that? Wait, 
Sí. So when we're doing project, we you say we have to put a comment. So do we have to do it for every single space? I mean lines. Um, almost. You know, like here, I have a comment for for this block of code. I don't need a comment for every single line here, but you should have a comment whenever you're doing something new in your script. So a good reference would be the workshops that we've been doing. You can kind of look at how I format the script in our workshops and and that'll be something kind of like I want to see in your in your project. <laughs> All right, so long, you have a question. <laughs> Do you, you have an application for McDonald's or In-N-Out? Uh, no, I don't. Like the, it might look like there's a lot of stuff here, but trust me, you guys are, are set up to do this well. And I know that you can't do it just from, from last semester. You know, um, all the students last semester, they were able to do the project. So I know you can do it too. And you have a lot of time to work on it. And, you know, you can talk about the project with classmates and me in Discord. So that'll help out a lot too. All right, so any other questions? If you don't have any questions that you can think of now, you know, don't worry. You can, of course, ask in Discord or, or in class later on, too. All right, I want to mention one last time. I'll update this deliverables page later today, and hopefully that's the last time that I have to update this document because, again, I don't like updating it, you know, multiple times. That's a hassle for you. But I'm going to update it to be a little more explicit that for all of your figures, you have to do it for the top five most populous counties. All right, so um, this, actually, yeah. um, actually, uh, we're still going to get homework, right? While we're doing project one. Yeah, you're still going to get homework and you're still going to have quizzes. And actually for our next homework assignment, I was kind of thinking about this last night. I might, I'm leaning towards making a homework assignment where Basically, I gave you a data sheet, and I'm also just going to show you a figure that you have to make from that data sheet. So basically, I'm going to give you, um, kind of like mimicking the project, right? I'm giving you a figure that you have to make. So it'll be like, it's not going to be this, of course, but I'll give you some figure that you have to make with a data sheet, and it's up to you to make the entire script yourself. And so that would be a good kind of imitation of what you have to do for the project. But yeah, you're still going to have homework and you're still going to have quizzes um, during the project. All right, anything else? Okay, so now we don't really have time at all to go through the, the workshop. So what I'll do instead is actually open up the, the data sheets that you're given here and that'll give you a better idea of, of the project right now. I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I don't want to show you my script accidentally. Actually, I'll just make a new script here. Okay. Let me go over here. Okay, so let's open up the data that we have for the project. This is our workshop from last time, I know. Okay, look, oh, here's here's the code. I'm not gonna open it though. All right, let's make a new script. <laughs> yeah, you would like to find out, huh? Too bad. Okay. So this is how you would kind of start out your project, right? We it's like we've what we've done so far in the class. We clear the memory, clear the command window, and then we start out by, by importing our data. So I guess I'll give you this very first part, um, but you guys know how to do this now, how to import a data sheet. So we have two spreadsheets that we have to import here. So you see for me, I have other data sheets, but we're only going to be using two. So we're going to be using these two data sheets that are highlighted, highlighted here. So this is also how I kind of want to see your comments used throughout too. So I made a section here called import data. And then in this section, I'm going to import 
each spreadsheet. So I'll make one comment basically for each uh, spreadsheet. So I'll say import California County Population Data. Okay, and then, I don't know, you, you can call this whatever you want, of course, but let's say, I'm going to call this pop for population. And just as an aside, kind of, I would recommend that you make your variable, one, it should be something that makes sense so you know what, what it is, but it should also be kind of short so you don't need to type out a really long variable, you know, multiple times throughout your code. So I'll call that pop, and then we'll say read table, and we want to import the California County population data. So that's Cali County pop.csv. We'll run this and I'll save this script. All right, and then here in our workspace, we have our population spreadsheet. <clears throat> All right, so it's 58 by two. Let's open this up. And in one column, we have the county name. And in the other column, we have the population data. So it's a really simple spreadsheet, but we need this for the plots when we have something that's um, on a per million basis. Did I do it down here? Yeah, okay, so percentage of population, you, you need that data for this as well, of course, because you're going to find the percentage of how many people are vaccinated in each county. So you need to have that data for the for how many people are, are in are in each county. Okay, now let's import the more important spreadsheet here, which is the vaccine data. I'll call this VAC. And we want to use oh yeah, I need to make a comment once again. Let's not forget that. So import California County vaccination data. You know, it doesn't have to be this exactly in your code, but make sure you have a comment or a section, a kind of section title here. And then you have a comment um, for each new line of code that you have or each new thing that you're doing. So this is called COVID-19 vaccines by county. And again, I'm not going to rename the spreadsheet over here because I'm going to download a new spreadsheet late, later on for data that's on. April 22nd and I don't want to have to you know update that name to be to be updated in, in MATLAB here it's going to be the same exact name for that new updated spreadsheet okay let's run this now let me you see all of that table just ran in my command window so make sure you also suppress each line of code all right let's open this table up and take a look at it so here we go we have 5,500 rows just about, and we have 17 columns. And of course, as this spreadsheet is, is updated, we're gonna have more and more um, rows here. Okay, so at first I thought I imported the wrong spreadsheet. Let me go back up top. Okay, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Let's open that up again. I think this is, um, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's just California. Yeah, okay. So we have 18 columns. And uh, so let's take a look at some of them. So one of them we have is total doses. And then the next one we have is cumulative total doses. So total doses, this means how many doses were administered per day. So how many vaccines were given per day? And then a cumulative total doses, that means, you know, at this respective day, how many cumulative vaccines were given? So you see, if we look at this column on, on December 16th, there were three vaccines given. And on the next day, six vaccines were given. So the cumulative total doses on, on December 17th is now nine. You know, three plus six. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not forgetting about the quiz. I know that's in four minutes. So I, I still want to talk about a few of these columns, though. So another column is Pfizer doses. And it's going to be the same kind of thing. So we have Pfizer doses given per day. 
and then we have the cumulative amount of Pfizer doses given. <clears throat> then we have, thank you for saying though no about the quiz. And then we have Moderna doses given per day, and then the cumulative amount of Moderna doses. So, uh, Lissandra, I think I answered that question now. We have doses given per day, and then the cumulative amount of doses given for that respective day. So, JJ, that's for Johnson and & Johnson. Okay, and then we have partially vaccinated. And then we have, so that, that can mean like one dose given. But the, the one that we're going to look at is actually this column here, where it says at least one dose given. And then we're going to look at cumulative at least one dose given. And then we also have a column here for fully vaccinated people and for cumulative fully vaccinated people. So we're gonna be looking at these two columns as well uh, for, for one of the plots. All right, so that's your explanation for all of the, the data that you have. So if you have more questions on this later on, we could talk about it, but we're running out of time here. So I'll go back to, um, to Canvas because your quiz is about to start, so don't forget. Um, if you want your quiz from Monday graded, you need to let me know before the quiz starts. Okay, Lissandra, we could talk about it um, after the class or at a different time, just because we're running out of time. And also, this quiz, it's actually it's going to end at um, 3.50, basically because I'm going to give you five minutes, you know, five more minutes to make sure that you copy and paste your code into Canvas. So the format is the same as last time. You're going to put in your answer in a text box. And if we did contact you, does that mean we don't have to take the quiz or attempt it or any in any way? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, if, if you aren't going to take the quiz today, you can just leave right now if you want. Okay. I have a quick question about um, the interpreter latex. Oh, that's not going to be on the quiz? No, no, you don't have to worry about that. No. Okay, so this is the quiz. It, it basically looks almost the exact same as last time. Just some numbers are different, and the colors for your lines are different. Make sure you post your, your answer in that text box that you saw. Oh, Patrick, um, is it okay if so you... So paste it into here. Pa yep. uh, Patrick? Mm-hmm. Um, is, okay, is it okay if we have our quiz after our homework's due? Um, for, oh, no, how I, I'm going to keep doing it like I, how I've been doing it. I'll give you the answers to the homework before the quiz, though, so you can study that way. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So before, are right, you're going to give the, you're going to give the solutions before the quiz, before the quiz, basically. Mm -hmm. the yeah, just like I always do. All right. all right. Quiz is started now. So if you're taking it today, um, it started. So, so go ahead. If you told me that you wanted your quiz from Monday graded, then you do not have to take the quiz. You can leave if you want, and I'll see you guys after spring break. Would mm -hmm. it be office hour for uh, spring, during spring break? <laughs> um, no, but if you want to meet, we can meet up too. A... Okay, I'm going to mute my mic, but I'll see all of you that are leaving. I'll see you after break. Um, I, had a, I had a quick question. Okay, yeah. Uh, regarding the, the, the quiz, because the one that I sent you on Mon for like Monday, if you're able to run it, does, can, like, can I get full credit? I mean, like, good grade, I mean, or depending on how you're going to grade it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to look at your script. I'll run it, and I'll see if, if, it, if it looks right right away, then you get 100, basically. But if not, I'm going to look at uh, which parts that you did incorrectly and i'll just grade it like that oh, okay and we're gonna get feedback on that too right mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you very much mm -hmm. 